Jacobs was just packaged par drive by Steen. Such a dangerous move that is. You have no way of protecting yourself. Your head's exposed. No! His neck could be broken. This is ridiculous. When, when is this going to stop? Can somebody get some help down here? Kevin Steen, you son of a bitch! that has risen between Eddie Edwards and Kyle O'Reilly and where Davey Richards fits into all of that. That affects our main event. It certainly does tonight. Tonight's main event, Caprice Coleman, Cedric Alexander, take on the team that could be the new American Wolves, Davey Richards and Kyle O'Reilly. We'll also talk about Ring of Honor's 10th anniversary as well as the two-day showdown in the sun that's upcoming. But up first, a special look at a restructuring, Nigel, within the Embassy. Let's learn more about Embassy Limited before we see Tommaso Ciampa in action. Ho, 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 ho. Another night that Prince Nana takes uh, the... Your Majesty. What? If I may. Now, in the new era of Embassy Limited, it's not so much about royalty. It's about royalties. It's about profits. And it's about what the investors want to see. The investors need to make sure that the dominant male, Tommaso Ciampa, starts getting some real competition around here. Competition. I breed off competition. And TJ Perkins, you walk around boasting about being undefeated on television in what? Three matches. I've been undefeated since day one, over a year now, and I haven't lost a single match. And now with the barrister by my side, I get the opportunities that I deserve for the Ring of Honor title to come home with the embassy where it belongs. Well, just when you thought Prince Nana's embassy couldn't get any more crooked, overbearing, or obnoxious, Nigel, they added an attorney. Absolutely. You know, and the heat has been on Nana to find stiffer competition for the undefeated Tommaso Ciampa. And having wrestled in myself, few are better than this young man from California, TJ Perkins, who is still undefeated on Ring of Honor TV. This match is set for one fall. Currently in the ring, Lester Nana of Los Angeles, California. Weighing 196 pounds, T.J. Perkins! So will Perkins' television undefeated streak continue against the man whose shoulders have yet to be pinned or made to submit here in Ring of Honor? And while many have labeled the embassy a vanity project of Nana's, where his men always took a back seat to the prince himself, glorifying himself, and hogging the spotlight, and setting up various tomato cans, yeah. as they call it in the yeah. boxing industry, to run Champa's record up. But these new investors, whoever they may be, are not going to stand for that. Barrister R.D. Evans on their behalf has demanded the champ be put on the fast track to success. To success. His opponent, the company, by Prince Sada and Barrister R.D. Evans, wrestling out of Palermo, Sicily, weighing 223 pounds. He is representing the Embassy Limited, the dominant male, Tommaso Schumpa. Something I noticed, an immediate change with the Embassy Limited, Nigel. Usually it would be Mr. Ernesto Osiris in a parade of confetti or feathers or whatever they might be. All about Prince Donna, but it was Tommaso Ciampa that was front and center. As we take a look at our tale of the tape, ages are almost the same. 
Champa has three inches and almost 30 pounds on Perkins. Champa refuses to shake hands with any man. Will that change with Embassy Limited? This is going to be a great contest. This is one I look forward to as soon as I found out it was happening. Yeah, this week is going to be jam-packed here on the broadcast. And look at that look at for that. the first time ever. Champa shakes hands. He adheres to the code of honor. But he looks to turn it into offensive opportunity. But Perkins, lightning quick. He's able to counter. Cross-body press. Fists of fire for Perkins. But there you see the undeniable will of Champa there, but the ultimate counter puncher. Here comes Perkins who misses. Champa looks to come in, and it's Perkins who scores. This looks like a new Champa, and not necessarily for the better. Well, again, with corporate restructuring, a lot of things can happen. Yeah. And it's Champa who takes the timeout. Usually the man has one gear that's full out and one direction that's forward, but he goes backwards here. Perkins, oh my! Look at that, beautiful. Springboard drop kick from the inside out. Lands it on the apron. CJ well, Perkins in control. Well, that obnoxious blowhard attorney, Barrister R.D. Evans, can't believe I'm actually saying his name. You know what you have when you have a hundred attorneys buried up to their necks in sand? No, what do you got? Not enough sand. <laughs> so Perkins has Champa tied to the tree of woe, and Champa's own weight is working against him here. Unable to pull himself down, but wait a minute. Nana was able to reach in and derail Perkins' offensive opportunity. Champa extricates himself and scores. And you've got to say, in Nana's defense, it wasn't Embassy Limited. That was Prince Nana. Well, it certainly was. Perhaps a new focus with Embassy Limited will be beneficial. Something's going to change, he says. Well, you know, and, and Champa is no doubt a blue chip athlete, Nigel. Yeah. He certainly is. And, you know, I wanted to get your thoughts about Tommaso Champ. You said he fought some tomato cans, and that's, you know, boxing vernacular for some soft opponents. It, it's boxing vernacular, and uh, that's what a lot of people have said, but I have to Ooh. disagree with them. I mean, take a look at Final Battle. He wrestled Jimmy Wave, who is, you know, a stalwart in Ring of Honor history. I wrestled Jimmy Wave on a number of occasions. He took me to the limit every single time. Champa dispensed with him, not without some difficulty, but he did dispense with him. So Champa has achieved every goal that he has set out to so far in Ring of Honor. The dominant male undefeated here in Ring of Honor competition. Big shot there from Champa as Perkins was tied to the ropes. The great escapability of Perkins comes back to haunt him there as Champa did some scouting and he knew what TJ liked to do and he hung him out to dry here at the Dubirds Arena. Watch out, this could be bad. Oh! He just wheelbarrowed him right into the barricade, Nigel. I said it could be bad. It was worse than bad. Later tonight, footage of the violent war between Kevin Steen and Steve Carino in final battle. This is it. Two, no. Did the right thing, though. Threw him inside. Tried to get the pin as quickly as he could. Of course, that led to Steen's reinstatement. Kevin Steen is back in Ring of Honor, fans. And the rampage afterward, of course, left three men on the injured list, threatened executive producer Jim Cornette himself. Plus a look at the personal problems between Eddie Edwards and Kyle O'Reilly that has left ROH world champion Davey Richards in an awkward position. I can't wait to learn more about that later on here in the broadcast. Look at this. Look at how Champa was able to use his strength to turn it into a submission hold. Use that sleeper hold takeover. Now to the cross face, and he's got it applied. Can Champa put him away? Perkins, though, able to build his vertical base back up. For as quick as he is, Perkins is strong as well. He shows it there. Throwing those knees in, those knee strikes. Hey, knock a man out. Look at Perkins daring him. Come on. That's how tough this kid is. Dragon screw leg whip. ROH makes its live debut in Cincinnati at the Masonic Temple on Friday, February 17th. All the stars will be there. Tickets and info, ROHWrestling.com.
And we want to say hello to all the fans that tune in every week in Cincinnati and in Dayton. Perkins! Missile drop kick! It's a glancing blow, caught him on the shoulder, but gave him enough just to take him down. Sometimes when you get hit from behind, you don't know where you're coming from afterwards. Some tense moments here for Embassy Limited. How embarrassing would it be for the investors to see the dominant male go down to defeat? Look at the string! Powerbomb! Shoulders down, two, no! That's a mistake from T.G. Perkins. He pointed to the stars instead of putting his feet on the shoulders of his opponent. That's a mistake that could have cost him the match. More news tonight on the 10th anniversary event of Ring of Honor, March 4th in New York City, plus the two-day extravaganza showdown in the sun, March 30th to 31st in Fort Lauderdale. All the fans from all over the world will be there. And we also want to thank all the fans that are tuning in West Palm Beach this and each and every week. Champa pulls down the knee pad. Bare bone meets oh. face. Look at TJ's face. He's out. Going for it again. Sinclair might want to think about stopping it, but instead, Champa now up on the shoulders. Perkins tries to fight out. Can't do oh, it. Crush it. Champa. Got him. the ceiling for Tommaso Ciampa. How far can he go here in ROH? Let's take a look at what led Tommaso Ciampa to continue his undefeated streak. Perkins tried in vain to counter Project Ciampa. Another falls. Embassy Limited reigns supreme. So Ciampa remains the dominant male, but when we come back, a very special look at ROH's most beloved grappler. Stay with us. Is this the best you've got in your honor? It's spring break for wrestling fans in Fort Lauderdale at the War Memorial Auditorium as Ring of Honor comes your way Friday, March 30th at 8 p.m., Saturday the 31st at 1 p.m., Showdown in the Sun. Two days, two events, 16 matches, 30 stars. Tickets are on sale now at ROHWrestling.com. You can see both events on pay-per-view for only $19.95. It is a wrestling extravaganza you cannot afford to miss. The House of Truth will be a part of Showdown in the Sun. Truth Martini, Roderick Strong, Unbreakable Michael Elgin. What is the plan, Truth, for South Florida? The plan is this. Showdown in the Sun, Ring of Honor, the major league of all of professional wrestling. Be there or be square, Florida, because you don't want to miss Roderick Strong, Unbreakable Michael Elgin, and the managerial sensation. Truth Martini, tell him, Mr. Florida. You just said exactly what I was going to say. Mr. Florida, you talk about a home field advantage. March 30th and March 31st. Come watch history in the making. Welcome back to Ring of Honor Wrestling. Our main event tonight, Nigel, of course. It's Davey Richards and Kyle O'Reilly teaming up to take on Caprice Coleman and Cedric Alexander. Yep. Will we see a new American Wolf? But up next, a special look at ROH's most beloved wrestler. I was born, I was born three months premature along with my twin sister. I weighed just over a pound when I was born. I wasn't very big at all. I was given to the age of four to live. I wasn't supposed to live past the age of four. I wasn't supposed to walk. I wasn't supposed to talk. I wasn't supposed to do much of anything. I spent pretty much the first year of my life in and out of intensive care, living in a hospital. Until the age of about six or seven, I think I went through about seven or eight different surgeries. Tracheoplasty, palatoplasty, and a tracheotomy. Essentially to rebuild my throat, the roof of my mouth, and the tracheotomy was to help me breathe. But I didn't let any of it slow me down. By the time I was like eight or nine, I was walking, I was running, I was doing everything an active kid could possibly do. Played football, baseball, a lot of roller hockey with my friends. Uh, fell in love with wrestling when I got to high school. I didn't have the best record, but that didn't stop me from trying. Nothing was going to stop me from trying. My family said not to do it, wasn't going to stop me. Doctor said not to do it, wasn't going to stop me. Just keep going, just keep pushing. My first day at pro wrestling school was brutal. A lot of running, a lot of squats, a lot of yelling. Wasn't stopping. I wasn't giving up for anybody. Some people didn't care too much that I was in there. Some, some people didn't want, oh, we don't want this little guy here. He's not good for wrestling. He's, he's too small. He's too little. He's too weak. As far as I'm concerned, win or loss aside, every day I'm a winner. Every day I wake up and take a breath, I'm a winner. Every day I get to compete, I'm a winner. Every day I get to go out and prove everybody wrong, I'm a winner. 
I love pro wrestling. Well, his one loss record is not even important. Grizzly Redwood beats the odds every day he wakes up. And he makes his broadcast TV debut here tonight. Let's go to Bobby Cruz. This match is set for one fall. Introducing first wrestling out of the Kodiak Pass on the Yukon Territory, weighing 145 pounds, Grizzly Redwood. His opponent currently in the ring, weighing 232 pounds, Devin Storm. So Devin Storm promises to be a tough test as Grizzly Redwood makes his debut. What is that? What is this all about now? Oh, dear. Well, here comes Truth Martini. What in the world is he doing here? Why is Martini in the House of Truth interrupting the television debut of this inspirational young man? You are such a glory hound, Martini. Taking the spotlight off of Grizzly. Willy Wonka, yeah. I concur. Well, if he needs an oompa loompa. All right, make your point, Martini, and then let's see Grizzly in action. Shut up! <laughs> now, life is full of choices, and the choices you make determine your future. Now, I'm going to give... You, two choices. Choice number one, accept this $500 and allow Michael Elgin to take your place in this match. What? Or choice number two, piss Michael Elgin off. <laughs> it's a pretty easy choice to Your make. choice. What a disgusting, low, skunk, snake in the grass. You give Devin Storm no choice. Either take the money and leave, or get beaten up by the unbreakable Michael Elgin. <laughs> Wise choice. Yeah, what choice did you give him, Martini? Oh, dear. Grizzly Redwood, after this match, you're going to wish you died as a child. Oh, please. <laughs> what a disgusting evil. I'm not afraid of you, big man. You want it? Let's go. Yeah, let's All go. Right. Let's do it. Oh, but Nigel. Nigel, it's now going to be unbreakable Michael Elgin against Grizzly Redwood. Uh, doesn't look good for little Grizz here. Oh, my goodness. Still wants to shake his hand. Look at that. Well, Grizzly Redwood is a sportsman. He's a hero. He wakes up every day he wakes up a miracle that story inspirational one the bell sounds and this is one time where i want truth martini here come on truth sit down i got questions for you in the ring really uh, doing his best oh uh, how at michael Alley. how do you sleep at night how do you wake up in the morning how do you do something like this <laughs> i sleep very good at uh, night Grizzly Redwood, he does not deserve to be in Ring of Honor, and we're about to make an example. I don't care about his childhood history. You, I, I do not care about the things he overcame. Like I said in the ring, he after this match, he's gonna wish he died as a child. You are <laughs> truth. You're not even a human being. You really are a Helen Hunt. <laughs> My goodness, Michael Elgin now. He's going to look to physically destroy Grizzly Redwood. I hope this is over. No, look at how tough Kick Grizz is. Kick out on one. What do you say about that, Truth? Kick out on one. At one, where? Who, where? You who, when? Who match, saw that? You watched the match. Shut your mouth Listen, Elgin's 100 pounds heavier than, than Redwood. We know that. And he's infinitely stronger. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Sleeper hole. Yeah. Go get him, Grizz. Elgin way, way too powerful. Wait a minute. No, he's not. Look at that. He's do back it. on him. You will stop at nothing. Truth, you'll hey. stop at nothing, won't you? Wait a minute, what's Grizzly doing? What's he yeah. thinking? What's on his mind? Go, go, Grizz, go! Oh! Uh -oh. <laughs> Caught! Oh, my goodness! Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Unbreakable Michael Elgin. <laughs> what a merchant banker. Poor Grizzly Redwood. 
I hope this is it. Shoulders are down. No, he kicks out. He's tough. He won't stop fighting, folks. I'm telling you, we all know now what he's gone through in his life so far. It's going to take a lot to keep him down. But a lot is right in the ring with him. Oh, my God. And I do not appreciate how you two make me out to be the bad guy. Because I'll tell you what a good guy I am. After this match, I'll actually put up the money and pay for Grizzly Redwood's funeral. Oh, <laughs> give me a break. Uh, Listen to this crowd, True. Heart of gold. Listen to this. The Dewburns Arena coming alive because they know. Could be a mistake. Oh! It is. oh! Roderick, what's going on? Elgin. Yeah, he's got to have Strong out here as well. And look at the determination of the face of Grizzly Redwood. Oh, 145 pounds of him. Enziguri there. Keep fighting. Keep chopping wood, Grizz. The straps are down. Cannibal. No, wait a second. Oh, wait a second. Oh, wait Elgin a held on. Oh, no. Face buster. Grizz is doing fantastic for no, himself. No, no, no. It wasn't yes, supposed to go is. like this. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. Tornado DDT! Oh, I don't believe it! One, two, no! This would be the greatest upset in... Hey, listen! Roderick Strong, you watch your language out here at ringside! They try to get oh, no! Buckle bomb! Sit out! Spinning! Power bomb! And three! Please! <laughs> Anymore. Give that we factory. I can't believe what we saw. Here's a replay of the devastating spinning sit-out power bomb there by Michael Elgin. I've got to get the taste of this though out of my mouth. Can it really be this bad? Hey folks, when we come back, Kevin Steen, Steve Carino highlights from Final Battle. Stay with us. Want more ROH? Log on to ROHWrestling.com, the home for Ring of Honor online. Become a ringside member and get instant discounts on merchandise, DVDs, and internet pay-per-views. Watch over 20 hours of new video every month, including classic matches, out-of-print DVDs, and priority access to the ROH TV show. Interact with stars of ROH in exclusive Q&A sessions. This is the complete Ring of Honor experience. Become a member today at ROHWrestling.com. Visit the online store at ROHWrestling.com for the latest Ring of Honor DVDs and official apparel. You can now purchase past and present live events and internet pay-per-views on DVD. Featuring stars such as The American Wolf, Davey Richards, Wrestling's Greatest Tag Team, The Briscoe Brothers, Eddie Edwards, Jay Lethal, Roderick Strong, The All Night Express, and many more. ROHWrestling.com also carries the latest in apparel with t-shirts, baseball caps, and much more. For all your Ring of Honor merchandise needs, visit ROHWrestling.com today. Welcome back to Ring of Honor. As promised, we now go to footage of how Kevin Steen won back his ROH roster spot in Final Battle. A warning, this match was no disqualification and contains graphic footage. Viewer discretion is advised. As soon as they walked out, everybody in this arena stood up, yep. knowing exactly what is coming next. When this deal was made to bring Steen back in, Carino came up with the idea. He has to defeat the monster he created. Steen! Up the ante further and said, I want you to be here at ringside, Cornette. I want you to see this. Look out! It's no disqualification. Oh! No! No! Oh my god! Not gonna see any headlocks, wish locks, or arm bars in this one. The knockout shot. Look at that! Suplex! Oh! Carino! No way! Oh my god! This display of brutality, the sheer physicality, the danger of what we're seeing in the ring. Happy yeah. pile driver! Cornet screaming no! Oh my god! One!
was to destroy Steve Guino and win my job back. Check! Number two. My God! What's number three? Uh-huh. All right. Cornette's number three! Oh, come on now. Oh, wait a minute, Generico! Let me stand toe to toe! Steve and Generico! is in for a terrible 2012. You know, everyone at one point feels like they're in a cage. And that's the way I felt for the last year. Ever since Ring of Honor's tried to keep me out from doing what I love. But it's over. In one week, I get unleashed on live TV, on that precious Ring of Honor television program that they're all so proud of. Especially Jim. Hey, Jim Cornette, you love that show, don't you? But you know what? I think something's lacking. I'll tell you, it's certainly not lacking in kissers and puppets and dedicated athletes who show sportsmanship so that Jim likes them. What it is lacking of is unpredictability and chaos and, well, fear. But that's all here now, because I'm here now. And you know, the more I think about it, the more I have trouble understanding why Jim doesn't like me, because I think we're actually a lot alike. Of course, I'm not a hundred years old, but Jim's always been a guy who said what he wanted, did what he wanted, ran his mouth, and he didn't care who it pissed off. But I guess as he got older, Jim got a little softer, probably in more ways than one, but it doesn't matter because I will never go soft. I will never conform. Actually, my plan is quite the opposite. In 2012, I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to beat Jim's a little boy toy champion, Davey Richards. I'm going to take the Ring of Honor world title. And once that happens, I'm calling the shots. Seven days until everything changes. You know, when I made my predictions about what could happen if Kevin Steen was allowed to return to Ring of Honor, injuries, lawsuits, bad publicity, Everybody said, oh, Cornette's old, he's out of touch, it's not that bad, the sky's falling. Well, at final battle, the sky fell on three men. Steve Carino, Jimmy Jacobs, and El Generico. Injured, gone to the hospital, their careers in jeopardy, all because of Kevin Steen. That's just in one night. What about after one week, one month, God forbid one year? What's going to happen then? Kevin Steen's made no secret that he wants to screw with me and mess with Ring of Honor. And he'll do anything to accomplish that. He's a bipolar egomaniac, and he's a sociopath. I know Kevin Steen is a popular guy. He's got a lot of fans. I don't understand the attraction, but he does. And I'm a businessman. I want to sell tickets. But at the same time, I don't want to do it at the expense of other people's health and welfare. So Kevin Steen is going to make his live television debut next week. He's going to be here, but so am I. And I've got a message for Mr. Steen. I'm pretty certain he's not going to lie. To recap, Carino and Jacobs sustained neck injuries. Generico hospitalized with a rupture of the C4 vertebrae and hasn't been hurt from since. Steve will be here live next week on TV, and Jim Cornette says he will have a message for him. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. Next week is going to be a bumpy ride. Our TV main event still to come. But up next, we go inside Ring of Honor. Stay with us. Want more ROH? Log on to ROHWrestling.com, the home for Ring of Honor online. Become a Ringside member and get instant discounts on merchandise, DVDs, and internet pay-per-views. Watch over 20 hours of new video every month, including classic matches, out-of-print DVDs, and priority access to the ROH TV show. Interact with stars of ROH in exclusive Q&A sessions. This is the complete Ring of Honor experience. Become a member today at ROHWrestling.com. If your high school, college, or civic organization would like a fun and exciting way to raise money, you can bring Ring of Honor action to your city live and receive a share of the proceeds. School sports teams, booster clubs, police and fire organizations, and more can raise funds while providing the wrestling fans in your town with the live action and excitement that only Ring of Honor Wrestling supplies. For more information, email info at ROHwrestling.com. Ring of Honor and your school or civic group can make an unbeatable tag team. 
the troubled friendship that has the Ring of Honor world champion caught in the middle. The television title up for grabs next week. And wrestling's greatest tag team is still angry at, well, lots of people. That's tonight, inside Ring of Honor. Richards Edwards III at Final Battle brought to light problems that had been brewing in private between die-hard Eddie Edwards and Team Richards member Kyle O'Reilly. We sat down with both men to try to get to the bottom of it all. Me and Kyle, we were never best friends, but we never had any problems either. It all started once I won the world title. Then I sensed the bad vibes after that. I think he resented the fact that I won the title before Davey. I didn't have a problem with uh, Eddie winning the world title before Davey. That's life. What I did have a problem with was the way he acted afterwards. What really blew it up was when I was champion, I demanded the match with Davey. From that point on, when I saw Kyle in the locker room, in the hallway, he wouldn't even look at me. Eddie put Davey in a really awkward position. Davey promised if he didn't win the title on his next try, he'd never challenge for it again. He had to beat a guy who was like a brother to him. It was a risk, but win or lose, I felt like I needed to get out of Davey's shadow. I'd rather fight the fight and lose than not have the balls to find out who the better man was. He kept talking like being in Davey's shadow was such a bad thing, but if he wasn't in Davey's shadow, he never would have got there to begin with. He never appreciated Davey for what he did for him. After I lost the title to Davey, that's when things really blew up with Kyle. I knew that if I had a rematch, I had to do something different. So I set up training camp with Dan Severn. After that, Kyle showed me how, who he really is. Eddie knew that Davey was going to train with Severn, but uh, he waited till Davey went to Japan and went to Severn behind our backs. I think that showed a real lack of loyalty. When Kyle found out I was training with Severn, he couldn't have been happier. He couldn't wait. He was at the airport waiting for Davey to come back from Tokyo so he could stooge me out and score points with Davey. I thought Davey should know that his friend went behind our backs to train with Severn. My loyalty is with the guy who made me, just like Eddie should be. Kyle preaches loyalty, loyalty and respect. But where's his loyalty to his tag team partner, his real tag team partner, Adam Cole? He dropped him like a bad habit if he hears Davey's voice. Eddie tries to make excuses and, and put the blame on me. I'm just trying to be a good friend. I think Kyle's just jealous that he was an American Wolf with Davey. Davey's his hero, a bit of a man crush. And Kyle's willing to do anything he could do to get in between me and Davey. Eddie can say whatever he wants. I don't care what anybody else thinks except Davey. He knows the truth. What do I want me to say? You know, it's, uh, it's a lose-lose for me. I got two guys that are friends, and hell, I got two guys that are family members. And uh, they're in a war, man. They both see things their way, and they're both completely justified in their own minds. It's, uh, it's a shame they aren't family, because they fight like brothers. But at the end of the day, who am I going to take the war with me? Who's going to have my back to the very end? I have to say, Kyle. One man we know to never keep his feelings a secret is the prodigy Mike Bennett, who right here next week will challenge Jay Lethal for the world television title in a match with no time limit. <laughs> you know, I hope Jay Lethal doesn't think I'm just going to tuck my tail between my legs and run away. Because the fact is, I had that match won. I was TV champ. I had the match won, and Jay Lethal's come from behind underdog victory turned into a jump attack. Beat me from behind victory. Not only did I beat the former champ, but I was about to beat the current champ when Jay Lethal hit me with some illegal move. Out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Next week on TV... Jay Lethal, there's not going to be a time limit. There's not going to be no crooked, fat pants, Todd Sinclair. There's just going to be me and you with no time limit and nothing that's going to keep me from taking what is mine. Mm -hmm. And baby, when that belt is around my waist, mm -hmm. they're going to say, isn't that the oh-so-sexy mm -hmm. prodigy, Mike mm -hmm. Bennett. Meanwhile, the former World Tag Team Champions Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin are still stewing about the fact that they lost their titles at Final Battle, that the fans turned against them in New York, and the disciplinary action that has recently been taken against them by Ring of Honor. So here's the skinny. We went to the Ring of Honor officials and said, look, after all the crap we took in New York, after all the crap we took from the New York fans, 
you know what? We think we deserve a rematch, and we're requesting our rematch. And after all that we've done for Ring of Honor, all the prestige that we've brought to the tag team division, you know what the Ring of Honor officials say? They said, boys, where's our check? Where's the $5,000 a piece? Lay it on our desk. Oh, and by the way, you're wrestling the Bravados. The who? Are you kidding me? The Bravados? Whatever happened to a championship rematch clause? So we're starting from the ground up. That's a bunch of BS. Well, next week, we're going to be on TV, and we have something to say. So the Briscoes or anybody else that follows them or likes them, pay attention. Because I promise you, you're not going to miss this. Well, the tag team title scene here in Ring of Honor is certainly heating up. And it's going to get even hotter on March the 4th because the first match that has been announced for the Ring of Honor's 10th anniversary event will be for the World Tag Team titles as the Young Bucks challenge the Briscoe Brothers for the gold. This anniversary event by popular demand will be made available on pay-per-view live anywhere in the world with internet access for the special price of only $9.99. The 10th anniversary for $10. Go to ROHWrestling.com for the details. This event joins our spring break for wrestling fans, the two-day extravaganza Showdown in the Sun, live from Fort Lauderdale's War Memorial Auditorium on March 30th and 31st. Two days, 16 matches, over 30 international stars. Be there live in person or see both events on pay-per-view for only $19.99. Tickets are on sale now and going fast. Next week here on television, in addition to Lethal vs. Bennett for the TV title and Kevin Steen's in-ring ROH debut, we will have an update on the condition of the All Night Express, and we'll look at the issues that now exist between the Briscoes and the House of Truth inside Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor's 10th anniversary event comes your way live on pay-per-view, Sunday, March the 4th at 5 p.m. from the Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City. For tickets and information, go to ROHWrestling.com. We want you to see it. See it live. Now, fans, one of the matches you'll see on the 10th anniversary show is for the ROH World Tag Team titles, as the Young Bucks will challenge my guests at this time, seven-time tag team champions, Mark and Jay the Briscoe Brothers. From Sandy Fort by God, Delaware, New York City, y'all don't want to miss this. Them boys versus the lady boys. In New York City, the Big Apple, live on pay-per-view. $9.99, $9.95, I don't know, it's 10 bucks. Everybody got 10 bucks. You ain't gonna wanna miss this, New York City. Everybody, you be sure to be there. We're gonna be in the, in the big house, the Big Apple. Young Bucks, excuse me, the Lady Boys versus them boys. You don't wanna miss it. Well, we'll find out what happens. For tickets and information, go to ROHWrestling.com. Mark, anything you'd like to add? I Man, you ugly. The work begins now, because we're back on Ring of Honor with our TV main event, featuring two men from North Carolina. Cedric Alexander, Caprice Coleman, taking on the current ROH World Champion, Davey Richards, and Nigel, his training partner, future Shock member, Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah, it should be an excellent wrestling match to full four of ROH's finest athletes. But as we heard earlier, Kevin, questions remain as to how Richards will handle the tension between O'Reilly and Eddie Edwards. <laughs> Will this team, team be the new American Wolves? Yeah. Or will the problems between Richards' former partner, now world title rival Eddie Edwards, and his partner here, current training camp member Kyle O'Reilly, affect the world champ's mindset, even his in-ring performance? Uh, I've got some thoughts on that one. Yeah, will Coleman and Alexander, two of ROH's most popular wrestlers in the Mid-Atlantic region, score the upset they've been looking for? Let's go to Bobby Cruz. This is your television main event. It is a tag team match, set for one fall. Introducing first, wrestling out of Aberdeen, North Carolina. At a combined weight of 405 pounds, the team of Cedric, Alexander, and Caprice Coleman. They're going to have to go into overtime if they hope to win. Their opponents, at a combined weight of 415 pounds, the team of Kyle O'Reilly, and the Ring of Honor World Champion, American Wolf, Davey Richards. First time seeing Richards in an ROH ring since final battle. Let's go to the tail of the tape before our tag team encounter. Coleman, as usual, the elder statesman in this contest at 34. Both teams are very similar in size. Coleman and Alexander more experienced as a team under match conditions, 
but his training partners Richards and O'Reilly know each other very well, and both teams display exemplary sportsmanship. So before the Code of Honor, executive producer Jim Cornette is here with us at ringside. And Jim, the question that I have for you quickly, with Kevin Steen making his live TV debut here next week, we understand you're going to have a message for him. Well, that's right. I appreciate the opportunity to come out and see this tremendous main event. But Kevin Steen will be here live next week. And it's no secret that I don't like the fact that Kevin Steen's been reinstated in Ring of Honor at all. He can say what he wants to say and do what he wants to do next week, but I'm going to have a message for him, and I don't think he's going to like the message that I have to deliver. So Cedric Alexander starting off first, taking the left arm of ROH world champion Davey Richards. This is the biggest test for the team of Coleman and Alexander, who gave a great accounting of themselves at final battle, nearly qualified for a future world tag team title opportunity. A win here over the ROH world champion Kyle O'Reilly would do that. Very well. Standing moonsault. Richards out of the way. Just moved out of the way. Very nice. Very nice. Hey, Jim, speaking of messages, Haas and Benjamin are going to be here live next week, and you got to wonder what's on their mind after everything that's happened since Final Battle. Well, I had a heated conversation with uh, Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin right after Final Battle. The level of violence that they displayed in that match was not something that we want on a regular basis in Ring of Honor. The steel chair situation. Uh, with what we know, and Nigel, you can back me up on this, what we know, the studies that have been done on concussions and professional sports, there's no place for that in Ring of Honor for the health of the athletes. Absolutely not. And Ring of Honor taking the forefront in this sport, making the changes that need to be made, and I approve it for one. Kyle O'Reilly's in there with Caprice Coleman. Oh! oh! Drop kicked him out of midair. Look at that. Fantastic. He's got something to prove here tonight. And I tell you, it's not like these guys aren't putting their, their health and their, their bodies on the line every time they get in the ring without being whacked over the head with a folding chair or some other type of implement. And, and, and to be honest, I've known Haas and Benjamin for years. They've been close friends of mine, but they really took the reception. They got New York very hard. Wait a minute. Cover! Champ was tagged in. And listen, they take me to task for what I write. Listen, I've got an opinion and I'm going to share it. I called it the way I see it. I feel the same way as you do, Jim, about Hassan Benjamin. We go back a long way and I was shocked with the way they acted in New York. I don't, you know, a lot of people surprise me. Kyle O'Reilly and Eddie Edwards, they surprise me. Yeah, what do you think about that situation? Well, you had two fine young men and you know what they, what they say, there's three sides to every story. story. Your side, my side, and the truth. And in this case, I think Eddie Edwards and Kyle O'Reilly couldn't warm up to each other if they were cremated together. Look at that spin kick. Look at that. Eddie, Eddie hit O'Reilly with a moonsault on the way down. How did Caprice Coleman do that? He just wiped out. Kyle Plus Davey Richards. Oh, the boot to right, right to the face of Alexander. And now Richards going down the apron, missed the kick. Oh, leg sweep. Caprice Coleman showing me something, Jim. Come and on, he's Alexander. Guys. Wait a minute. Alexander looks like he's getting ready to fly. Time to go. Cut. Oh! Coleman pulled the rope down. Tremendous. Clockwork teamwork from Caprice Coleman and Cedric Alexander. And the New Birds Arena in Baltimore is rocking. They're on their feet. This is amazing tag team work here from the more experienced team. We've said it before. Coleman and Alexander, while O'Reilly and Richards train together, the heat of competition is a different animal altogether. And look at the tag team continuity, which I know something about. Quick tags, keeping the man in their part of the ring. Senton in, two, no. A long way away from tagging to Richards is Kyle O'Reilly. Look at O'Reilly, tries to get back to his corner straight away, which again is something, oh, oh my word, did you hear the sound of those forearms? Listen to that. Big collision. They're standing toe to toe here at the Dewburns Arena. Form smash. Oh! Here comes Davey. Huge kick. Look at this. This is like an open air pinball game. We have got to take one more break, fans. This match continues in two minutes. Wait a minute. Two minutes. Stay with us. We are back. Ring of Honor Wrestling continues. Kyle O'Reilly, Davey Richards, Coleman, and Alexander here in our tag team main event. Jim Cornette's here at ringside. Let's take a look at some action that we saw during our commercial break. Tag team continuity displayed by the team. Should we start calling them the New American Wolves, well, Nigel? I, I, th I think that's, I'm sorry to jump in, but I think that's premature because I think it's something that O'Reilly's pushing for, but it didn't look to me like Davey Richards uh, wanted to take that step right now. Look at this. Oh! Not what they had planned. Now 
your time, Colby. Make the tag. And only in Ring of Honor are you going to see this sort of entertaining wrestling. It's not sports entertainment. It's an entertaining sport. Look Man. at O'Reilly. Look at O'Reilly. He's got his eyes on the corner. And he puts the boot in Cedric Alexander's face. That's the way to cut off a tag. It may be morally uh, illegal, but not to the rules of wrestling. Shot to the midsection, though. Maurice Coleman using his legs. And he's right in his own corner. He's got to make that tag now, Jim. Now Alexander makes the tag, and here we go. The big man looking to fly. He's like a defensive tackle on this team. And look at the nip up. Oh, with springs in his legs. An amazing athlete. And I'll tell you guys, this is the kind of action you see from Ring of Honor. And this is another reason why Kevin Steen, in my opinion, if he exercised in the gym as much as he runs his mouth muscles and he worked out and he was an athlete and a competitor like these men, maybe I would have more personal respect for Kevin Steen. Oh, the drop kick scores on Kyle O'Reilly right in the jaw. Dragon what? suplex. No. Nope. Face buster. Down. So close, and what would have that meant? Feet of lust there. Less than half a count away from a tag team win for Coleman and Alexander over the ROH champion as Team Richards partner. I'll tell you, Nigel, I'll tell you what it would have meant. I think uh, Davey Richards would have been wondering if he could get Eddie Edwards back on it. Wait a minute, look at this. I disagree with you. Electric chair, position, go! Alexander converts. Reverse Harakarana. Oh, no! Harakarana! That had to be a 48 inch vertical leap from Splash! It could be an upset! Oh, One time, two, two no! no. Davey had the wherewithal to save, otherwise, this match was over. That was the move they call overtime, and it was almost victory for Coleman and Alexander. Ring of Honor's going to Cincinnati February 17th. We want you to be there. The ROH 10th anniversary, March 4th. Oh, that's going to be it. Two, no. no. Tremendous two phase maneuver in Cedric Alexander and Caprice Coleman. North Carolina's finest are trying to make their mark and their reputation in Ring of Honor, and Kyle O'Reilly is nearly out on his feet, Nigel. Uh, and they, I, look at this now. They've got him now. They've got to make the opportunity count. Richards back in the ring. Come on, Clock. Knee to the side of the head. O'Reilly oh. super kick. Super kick. There's bodies all over them. It looks like a wreck on the interstate. O'Reilly still standing. Did you hear the sound? Oh. That sounds like two big freighters colliding in the inner harbor right out the front door of the Deep Burns Arena. Ooh! Regal Plex! Two down! Shoulder tackled his own man to break up the pitting combination. And both teams showing me something here tonight. Hey, Lethal and Bennett next week for the TV title. Fight February's getting underway in style. Davey now taking control. You see the way he told Kyle there, get control. Richards was the captain, then he said, oh, of the American Wolves. That's got to be it. One, two, three. One, two, no! I do not believe it. The kind of innovative blend of styles, American strong style, mixed martial arts, pro wrestling that you only see in Ring of Honor. And look at the aggression of O'Reilly. Jump straight on top. Richards, Richards. He's going to the top rope here in the corner. What are you doing? He's got the submission on him now. The guillotine is hot. But he doesn't. Yeah, he's going to try and more damage. He? Oh, oh, my God. Double stop in the grips of the choke. Unable to protect himself oh, there. Oh, he's got that front face lock hooked in. The referee's calling. He's out. He's tapping. Yeah. Alexander tapped. He's out. What a tremendous contest. Take a look at the replay here. The double stomp with the guillotine applied. And O'Reilly was able to turn it into a submission victory. So Kyle O'Reilly and Davey Richards are victorious in their tag team debut here in ROH. And this crowd in the Dewbirds Arena on their feet for the American Wolf and his protege, Team Richards member Kyle O'Reilly. And Cedric what? Alexander, Caprice Coleman, they gave it everything they had. It could have gone either way. But what a tremendous athletic showing from all four men. Well, what in the world is this? Eddie Edwards?
fans down here to applaud a victory by Richards and O'Reilly. So Richards and O'Reilly score victory. Next week, wrestling's greatest tag team with a message for the Briscoes and the fans, Lethal and Bennett for the TV title win.